One thing, there's one thing that we need to, we need to focus on more than any other thing in our lives. And that one thing is the presence of Almighty God. God needs my attention. God needs your attention. Touch somebody next to you and say, attention, please. Attention. What is attention? The word attention means the act or the state of applying the mind to something. It's the act or the state of applying or giving your mind to a particular thing. You know, it, it, it's it, it's funny how we got so many things that we got. You know, we got we got sports. We've got we got making money. We've got relationships. We've got all of these things that 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 keep our mind boggled and keep our attention uh, away from where God would have it to be today. So today what I want to do is that I believe what my assignment is in this room is to get somebody to focus. Touch somebody next to you and say, attention please. To get, to get you to focus on what it is that God is trying to release in your life. I believe that God is up to some major things in the lives of every person in this room and the only thing standing in between you and you receiving what it is that you've been believing God for is if God can get you to focus on him. Amen. Amen. Preach, pastor. If he can get you to focus. I, uh, I was thinking about the sermon. I was led to Acts chapter 6 today. Acts chapter 6 Verses one through four, the Bible said, in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the 12 called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Now I want you to watch this. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, who we may appoint over this business. Everybody say this business. And then they said something very interesting, and I want you to get this. It says, but we will give ourselves. What, what, what were they saying? They said, we will give our attention. We will focus continually to what? To prayer and to the ministry of the word. What, what the 12 were doing is they were realizing that they had gotten away from their priorities. They realized that it was time to prioritize. It was time to put their focus back on what they were supposed to focus on. That there was a lack within the church. There was, the, the, the problem was is that the everyday needs of the people were being met, but, but, but their spiritual needs were going lacking. And they were not receiving what they needed from God. So they realized that in order for us to give spiritually, we've got to be spiritually focused. In order for you to get something from God, in order for you to receive what God has for you, you're going to have to pay attention to what God has to say to you. Attention, please. Why is it so important? Today, Pastor... Why is it so important that we give ourselves and give our attention to spiritual things? Why is that so important? Proverbs 20, 27 says it like this. It says, the spirit of man, now watch this. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Don't miss that. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. You see, this is what I need you to understand. The spirit of man is where God's light of revelation comes to you. Whatever God is going to say to you or speak to you or give you, he gives it to you through your spirit. The, 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 notice what it says, the spirit of man. Everybody say the spirit of man. The spirit of man is what? It's the candle. It's the light. It is the revelation. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. It is where we receive spiritual revelation. God will speak to the spirit of a man. He speaks to our spirit and he gives us direction for our lives. 
The reason some of us are wandering around without any direction spiritually, wandering around trying to figure out what God is trying to do in our life, is because we have not paid close enough attention to our spirit man. We're taking care of our flesh on a daily basis. How many of you eat good? Raise your hand. Come on, be real about it. You know what, y'all, 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 y'all got, we got to be real, y'all. Evidence is against us. Come on now, we've been eating good. You know what I mean? We eat good. We pay attention to it. We make sure we feed that natural man. We also, how many of you, go, how many of you like to go, uh, you like to go fishing? How many fishermen we got in the house? Look at here, fishermen all over the room. Amen. You like to go, how many of you like to go hunting? How many of you like to go golfing? How many of you women like to go shopping? Amen. And you pay attention. Look at there, boy, I, I stirred something up in here today. You pay close attention to those things because that's what you desire to do. Your flesh longs to go and do these things. It's, it, we have a, a desire uh, for pleasure and to do that, that, and we make sure that that's taken care of. But a lot of times what happens to us, God's not speaking to us, and we're not seeing supernatural things happen in our life because we're not giving the same kind of attention. Look at somebody next to you and say, attention, please. We're not giving the same kind of attention. Attention is what? The act or state of applying the mind to something. We're not applying our minds to the things of the spirit. Hang in here with me. We're going somewhere. The spirit of man is where God's line of revelation comes to him. He speaks to our spirit, gives us direction. Romans 8, 5 says, for they that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. Notice this, the act or state of applying the mind to something. They apply their mind to fleshly things. They that are after the flesh. Is this the Presbyterian church today? <laughs> they apply their minds to the things of the flesh. But then the Bible says, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, they that want to hear what God has to say, they focus their attention on spiritual things. You know, the Bible teaches us that spiritual things are only spiritually discerned. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. It's if you, whatever, if you're working on your spirit, man, then you're, 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 you're increasing your ability to be able to hear what the spirit has to say. The reason sometimes we miss out on what God is trying to say is because we've been minding the flesh so much that we have begun, we're, we're neglecting our spirit. If you're feeding your spirit, it's going to cause your spiritual ears to become more keen and you begin to hear hear what God has to say. We want, listen, and let me tell you something. We want to go all week long, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we want to feed the flesh, 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 and then we want to grab our Bible on the way out of the door on Sunday morning and say, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I'm going to go get what God has for me today. Can I tell you that minding the things of the Spirit doesn't just happen one day a week. It has to happen every day of your life. How much do you desire for God to move in your life. You got to give attention. Attention to what God's saying. Attention to your spirit man. Stay focused. Boy, it's going to get good in here in a minute. I feel, I feel like I just felt something kick in right here. Watch out. Listen, you got to stay focused on, on, on the things of the Spirit. Give attention to it. Now here's where it gets good. In Proverbs 20, 24, attention please. <laughs> That's the title of the sermon. Okay, it's good. Proverbs 20, 24, notice this. It says, man's steps are ordered and ordained by the Lord. Now this is amplified. Listen closely. Man's steps are ordered and ordained by the Lord. How then can a man fully understand his way? Now watch the wording. Man's steps are ordered and ordained by the Lord. That's the first time you see the word man. Second, it says, and how then can a man, everybody say man, man. fully understand his way? Now here's what's interesting about that verse of scripture. The word man is used two different times, but it's used from two different Hebrew words. Watch this. 
The first Hebrew word that, that man is derived from is the Hebrew word geber. Now this is what that means. It literally means a strong man. Everybody say a strong man. It, the, the, the Hebrew word geber means a strong man. The second man that we see is that how then can a man fully understand his way is from the original Hebrew word Adam. And it literally means this. It means ordinary man. Ordinary man. I don't know about you, but I do not desire at any point in time in my life to be ordinary. I don't want to be ordinary. Somebody said, Pastor, as long as you keep wearing your hair like that and do it like you'll never be ordinary. That's why I wear it like that. Amen. I don't want to be ordinary. I, don't, I, I, I never want to be ordinary. I never just want to exist. I never just want to get by. Not in, in the natural, but spiritually speaking. I want to know that when I get up out of here, I want to know when they roll me down the aisle and put my body in front of everybody, I want person after person after person to get up and say he was everything but ordinary. He would not settle for status quo. He would not settle with just getting by. He was always hungry for more of God. He wanted more of the Spirit of God, more of the presence of God, more of lives being changed and transformed. Now notice this. Two different Hebrew words. The first Hebrew word is that word geber. It means a strong man. The second one is Adam. It means an ordinary man. So when you begin to plug these two Hebrew words in and you read it with that understanding, then the scripture would read like this. A strong man's steps are ordered and ordained by the Lord. How then can an ordinary man understand his way? A strong man is one who is led by the Spirit. His mind is fixed on the things of God. He's strong in the Lord. Uh, an ordinary man is wandering around trying to figure out which way to go because he is not hearing from the Spirit of God. A strong man is one who is spiritually strong. Where does, let me ask you something. When we talk about being strong in the Spirit, what is it talking about? To be strong in the spirit is not to be strong within your own might, but it is to be strong with, within the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. It is the spirit of, of, of God, the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the Holy Spirit speaking to us, the Holy Spirit doesn't speak to your flesh, it speaks to your spirit. And, and that's why the scripture says in Ephesians 3.20 that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above according to the power that is at work where in us. You see, that the power, the strength of a spiritual man is not his natural might. It's not what he can do in the natural, but it is his spirit man that has stood this wrong. And it is the power of the Holy Spirit that is within him that makes him strong. It is the dynamite power of God that causes you to be strong, to see powerful things happen. You see, what you and I really need, hear me closely, what you and I really need to understand is that when we're spiritually focused, when we're spiritually focused, God can do great things in our lives when we stay focused. Don't lose me. When you stay focused, he can do something powerful. Now. Touch somebody next to you and say, pay attention. Attention, please. When we're spiritually focused. See, here's the thing. And I want you to get this because God's about to revolutionize somebody's life if you can get this in your spirit. It is the job of the enemy. It is the focus of the enemy and the job of the enemy to take your attention off of God. If he can get you doing something else, that's why it's so important that you pay that, that you be in the house of God. You need to be in God's house because it's in God's house where the word of the Lord comes forth that transforms your life. But if the enemy can get you off somewhere else doing something else, he can keep you away from what needs to happen in your life. That's why our marriages are in a mess. That's why we're in a mess physically, spiritually, emotionally, because the enemy gets us sidetracked and he gets our attention off of God. It is the job of of the enemy it's the job of the enemy to keep you spiritually distracted 
to take your attention off of what God is trying to do in your life. If he can keep you caught up, so tied up and tangled up in your mind on your job and with your money and in some kind of relationship, can I tell you young people something? It just, at the moment God's trying to release something in your life, the enemy will send somebody along to distract you. He'll send some, some, some boy standing six feet five inches, got broad shoulders, got, I mean, got washboard abs. He's got dark hair, blue eyes, dark skin, white teeth. Come on, somebody. He looks like, I'm telling you, that's what'll happen to you, honey. When you're trying to follow God, he'll send something along your way to take your attention off what God is trying to do in your life. I wish I could find 50 people so hungry for God and so thirsty for the things of God. God, and you desire the presence of God in your life that you're willing to focus on what God is trying to say to you today. It's the job of the enemy to do whatever he can to take your attention off God. To get you sidetracked. Jesus, in Mark chapter 5, it's a passage of scripture that a lot of would be familiar with because Jesus had ministered to a lot of people this particular day. He ministered to a lot of people. He was tired. He was wore out. But, but he came in contact with another guy that, that desired something from him. And it was an interesting thing because this guy really was supposed to have been one of those guys that really didn't believe Jesus was who he said he was. Isn't it amazing how many people will say they don't believe Jesus is, is, but then when they get in trouble, the first name they call is the name of Jesus. I thought you didn't believe in him. <laughs> but that's the first name they call. They call the name of Jesus when they get in trouble. This man by the name of Jairus was in trouble because they found out that his daughter was deathly sick. As a matter of fact, she had something that was going to take her life. And when, it get, when he got to that place to where he was desperate and in need, he didn't care what everybody else said. Just find Jesus. I'm trying to get to Jesus. And so he gets to where Jesus is and he says, I just need you to follow me. I just need you to go to my house. I don't care what anybody says. I ain't trying to right now. I ain't trying to keep my reputation. I'm trying to get my daughter healed right now. And so he heads out toward the house of Jairus. You know the story. And as he's headed that way, he encounters a woman. The Bible said is a woman with an issue of blood. She has an uncontrollable blood flow. They can't do anything with it. If you read it, the Bible says the doctors weren't able to stop it. She spent all the money she had, been every doctor she could get to. She couldn't find an answer. She couldn't get anything. So she, as Jesus encounters her, he encounters this woman. And the Bible says that he, that, that, that as, uh, you know, she says to herself, as, as Jesus is coming, she, she makes a statement within herself. She says, if I can just touch him, if I can touch just the hem of his garment, I, I know I'll be made whole. She makes it say, it just, just let me get close enough to where I can touch him. And, and as she comes and she touches the hem of his garment, Jesus said, oh, somebody's, somebody's touched me. So where, what, what's, what's going on here? And they point at who she is. And Jesus says something uh, to her. He begins to, 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 to say something. He said, daughter, uh, it is your faith. It's your faith that has made you whole. Watch what he said, your faith. Your faith's made you whole. For her to touch Jesus, she, she said, first of all, she said, if I can touch his garment, I'll be made whole. So what was it, what happened? She's focused on what? Not the people around him. She's not focused on the crowd. She's not focused on who's there and who's not there. She's focused on what? Touching his garment. She's focused now. Her attention is set on Jesus. If I could just touch him, I don't need to do anything else. Just let me, just get out of my way and let me touch that garment. That's all I need. Just let me reach down. That's all. Just get out of it. Let me touch that garment. So she's focused on her. And Jesus turns and says, daughter, it is your faith, your faith that made you whole. Now something happens in the midst of this and don't you miss this. Something happens in the midst of all of this because here we have Jairus with Jesus and all of this is taking place. He said unto her daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. 
Go in peace and behold of thy plague. 35. Then he said, while he yet spake. Notice what it said. While he yet spake. Not after, but while. Y'all got to read your Bible. It says, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue, synagogue's house a certain which said, now, 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 now let me tell you something, while he yet spake. You see, let me, let me tell you something. Anytime God gets ready to release something into your life, anytime he gets ready to speak something to you, the enemy will come immediately. <laughs> If you were to take in your Bible and turn back to the chapter before this one that we're reading now, there's a parable of the sower. In the parable of the sower, Jesus makes this statement. He says, when the, it, when, 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 when the word is sown, when that word is sown, he said, Satan uh -huh. comes immediately to steal your word. What is it? It's the job of the enemy to do what? When God speaks, let me tell you something. The Bible said he sent his word Y'all ain't hearing me. He sent his word and he healed our diseases. It is the job of the enemy to keep you from hearing the words that are coming out of the mouth of God. If the enemy can get you distracted where you cannot hear his word. Hey, you help yourself. See, see, this is what I need y'all to understand. <laughs> Every miracle that God gives, is, it, it, anytime God gives a person a miracle, it's never just about that person. Why? God never gives individual miracles. It's never about that. God ain't gonna heal you just for you. He's never done that. He's not capable of that. Because here's the thing. The Bible says that God, he, he's all-knowing. All -knowing. That means that he has every one of you on his mind all at the same time. Now I'm about to work this word right here. Listen, he's got all of you on his mind at the same time. Don't you miss this. Look at somebody and say, attention please. Don't you miss this? He's got everybody on his mind all at the same time. Now, I'm going to prove this to you scripturally. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible said, while he yet spake. The enemy is coming while he's speaking. The job of the enemy is to do what? Take that word. So it's while Jesus is speaking that the enemy comes in and he tries to divert the attention of Jairus on what Jesus is saying because it's so important. What, is Jesus, what, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, it's your faith that made you whole. You see, the enemy did not want Jairus to hear that it was the faith of the woman with an issue of blood that made her whole because if he heard that it was her faith that made her whole, then he knew it would be his faith that would make his daughters whole. I'm here to tell you something. God, the enemy, the enemy don't want you to hear it. When did it happen? Wow. Everybody say wow. Wow. Wow, he yet spake. Why? Because the enemy was up to something. The enemy's strategic. Let me tell you something. You got an adversary. It's the devil. And he's all he's after something. He's not after just anything. He's after your word. When the word is sown, Satan comes immediately and does what? He takes the word because that the word of God is when demons tremble. The word of God is where your body is healed. It's by the word of God the transformation comes in life. He don't want you to receive the word of God. That's why he tries every day trying to distract you. To, to do what? To take your attention. Now watch what happens. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master? Now here's where it gets real good. See, I don't want to ever want to tell you anything that I can't back up with God's word. 
You remember I told you there's no miracle within itself. The Bible said we're made overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. It didn't say we're made an overcomer. It said we're made overcomers by the word of somebody else's testimony. Your miracle was never just for you. It's for you and others. Jesus always has all of us on his mind at all times. He's mindful of you. You want me to prove it to you? Watch what happened. While Jesus yet spake, he's talking. While he, while he yet spake, he's in the middle of doing what? Daughter, it's your faith that made you old. While he's talking, look what happens here. Next verse. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, what word? The word they just brought from J. Iris's house. Wait a minute now. The Bible says, while he yet spake, he also heard the word. <laughs> while he was focused on her, he was still focused on him. He knew who he brought with him. While he yet spake, they came from the, the, the rules, and what did he do? He turned right around. He said, uh-uh, don't you listen to that. The enemy's trying to take your word. The enemy's trying to take, the enemy's trying to take your daughter's healing. He's trying to take your daughter's miracle. I wonder, is there anybody in this room that you know God is trying to say something to you? God's trying to get something to you. God's trying to release a word into your life, and you will not let the enemy take it. While he yet spake. Because you know what the enemy was trying to do? He was trying to sneak in on, sneak in on the Lord. Uh -huh. Sneak in now. He had a, a moment of amnesia. Uh -huh. He forgot who the Lord was for just a, moment. just a moment. He thought he could get the Lord caught up touching this one and he could rob this one of his miracle. But while he yet spake, he said, woman, this is how it happened. This is how good it is. Come here. This is how good it is. Come here. This is how good it is. Let me give you a picture of it. This is how it happened. Come back here. Get here and good where everybody can see us. This is how it happened. Daughter, thy, daughter, thy faith obeyed the hope. Don't listen to that. Daughter, thy faith obeyed. Don't you listen to that. Yeah. Back it up. Yeah. Back it up. 35. While he yet spake, uh -huh. they came from the house and they said, why trouble the master of your daughter's dead? While he yet spake, next verse. Soon as Jesus heard the word, uh -huh. while he was speaking, he heard the word. Uh -huh. Why? Because he's not just focused on her, but him too. Uh -huh. While he yet spake, they came and he said, daughter of thy faith and may be whole. Don't you listen to that. Don't you listen to that. Don't let the enemy take your word. Oh, I wish I knew somebody in this room that came to church today to hear the word of the Lord. I mean, I've come by to focus somebody's attention on what God's about to do in your life. I wish I could get you to touch about 10 or 12 people and say, attention, please. It's during this season. <laughs> it's during this season and this moment of your life that the enemy wants to get you distracted. You wake up one day and you go, man, man, my God, I ain't prayed in a while. Why? Because the enemy's got you distracted. You wake up one day and say, man, it's been a while since I've been in the word because the enemy's got you distracted. You wake up one day and say, you know what? I ain't been to church in three or four weeks. You know why? Because the enemy's got you distracted. Right. He's trying to take your word. He's trying to take your miracle. You can't let it happen. God's brought you too far. You've seen too much. Experienced too much. I'm not going to let the enemy take my word. Jesus said, don't listen to that. And he, at that 
point in time, he refocused Jairus' faith. You see, Jairus had just seen a miracle. Jairus had just experienced what God could do. He saw that woman with an issue of blood healed. And so he, he, he knew then that God was, could do something powerful in his life. But it's immediately the enemy comes to distract you. Now, let me say this to you, church, and we're fixing to go home. Or I say that now. <laughs> Let me say this to you. It's in seasons like this where there's moves of God and revival goes on and, and, and powerful moves of the Holy Spirit take place that the enemy is going to work overtime to get you distracted. Now you can go along with him and you can allow yourself to be distracted. Or you can make up your mind, God's got something good for me. Amen. Come here. It's all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get it. What better way to distract you than to use someone close to your heart? You know what I'm saying? Now that doesn't mean, don't take that wrong, it doesn't mean God's not going to do something in them too. You see, something has happened to try to distract what God was doing in you and in the one you love. But see, if you can hold your faith, God will work in her while he's working in you. You can't be distracted. You got to stay strong. Because what you saw God do in you and in her, you remember what he said? You remember what he said over and over again to the both of you? He doesn't start anything. He doesn't finish. God ain't finished yet. So you can't, you can't be distracted. You can't be distracted by this moment that the enemy's tried to come in and take your word. No, the Lord sent me by today to refocus your faith. Because what is ahead of you is greater than what's behind you. What God has in store for you. Is greater than what you've already experienced. Something supernatural is about to be released in your life. You get ready, you get ready, get ready. Now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody give God praise. Come on, somebody give God praise. The enemy's trying to distract us, y'all. The enemy's trying to take our focus off of where God is. The enemy's trying to take our focus on what God said. What has God said to you today? What is it that you are believing and trusting God for in this room today? I feel like I sense the Holy Ghost over here today. I sense something on this side of the room right here right now in the name of Jesus. God's refocusing some folks' faith here today. Causing you to be reminded of where God brought you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, touch now. Lift your hands in this section right here. All of you, lift your hands everywhere all over this section. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, now that you are touching them from the front of this, of this row to the back of this row, God. From the front to the back, Father, there is, Lord, you are doing something supernatural to refocus the faith of your people. The enemy has tried to distract, but God, but you hear the voice of the Lord right now. God's saying something strong. God's saying something powerful. God's going to use you now. <laughs> I want you two to step out here and take hands. Knowing and understanding the Lord like you two know him and understand him. Having experienced him like the two of you have experienced him in months gone by, the Lord would say to you, and you have to know this by the Spirit. That the strength that God has given the two of you 
and the anointing that he's placed on your life. God said, I've given it to you for this season because I'm an all-knowing God and I knew what your family would walk through. And I needed to have the kind of faith that every family would need in these situations. God said, I'm all-knowing and I work all things out for the good of those around you and for my, and for my glory. And the Lord said, it may be hard for them to see, but it's not going to be hard for you to see. You may have walked through moments in, in recent days and even hours in recent days where even you were saying, God, what are you up to? But the Lord said, hallelujah, that I have strengthened your faith because I'm going to use you as a rock in your family to help them walk through the seasons that they're walking through in their life right now in the name of Jesus. God said, I'm going to give you the words to say. I'm going to give you the moment to say them. I'm releasing a new word and you says the Lord. I'm giving you a fresh word and you're going to know when to say it and how to say it and I'm going to anoint it and God is going to use you this day. Say it, the Lord God Almighty. Somebody give God praise in this house if you hear the word of the Lord. In recent days, I've taken you through a season of refocusing some things in your life. You've had to walk through a season to where I could refocus your faith. Don't take for granted what you've had to walk through. Don't allow even the moments and the hours in even the recent days where the enemy tried to steal your word. Do not allow that to happen because the Lord said, I focused your attention for a reason because what I started in you I was not finished with you must stay focused says the Lord because there's something great coming in your future what God has used you to do will not compare to what God will use you to do but you have to stay focused something's happening on the inside of you right now even in the name of Jesus there's something happening in Jesus name you need to hear what the Lord says. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Can I tell you that Satan came immediately? He came immediately to try to take what God did immediately. But the Lord says to you, don't hear that. You listen to what I say. What I started, I will finish. God ain't done. Look at me. God ain't done. Look at me. God ain't done. God ain't done. God ain't done. I've heard the testimonies of what God has done to you. I heard the testimonies of what God used you to do. I've heard the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pull, pull my verses back up there. Give me back 535, I think, right? Hallelujah. My Lord. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house a certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. The enemy comes immediately. Immediately. When God is, is taking you into a new season and he's speaking a new word to you, the enemy comes immediately. 
immediately to try to take what God said, but look at 36. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As soon as Jesus heard the word, he said, unto the root, be not afraid, only believe. Don't you hear that? That's the enemy trying to take your word, but your word is alive in you. God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. It's like fire shut up in your bones, Stephen. It's like fire shut up in your bones. It's like fire shut up in your bones. Let me tell you something. As long as the enemy can keep you distracted, he can keep man after man after man after man after man after man addicted to something if he can keep you distracted. But the moment you're focused on what God said is the moment that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water to people... Somebody give God praise in this room. Somebody give God praise in this room. Oh. Come here. I want to pray for you. Not too many weeks ago, God started something in your life. You entered into a new season of your life. You started seeing things different than you've ever seen them. You knew who God was, knew the presence of God, but something different happened in you. Let me tell you something. It, it, it's the job of the enemy to try to distract you. But today the Lord sent a word to you. You won't be distracted. You're focused on what God said. This is your season and you're going to walk in it. And as you walk in it, the ones that you've been concerned about, the ones that you love, that you've been praying for, God said, watch what I do in their life as you release your word that I placed in you, says the Lord. My God, I sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My God. Since him here today. Stand on your feet all over the room and lift your hands into heaven. Lift your hands into heaven all over the room today. If the enemy can distract you, he can take your he can take your health. If the enemy can distract you, he can destroy your marriage. If the enemy can distract you, he can get your children addicted to something and get them out there doing stuff that they're not supposed to do. If the enemy can distract you, he can take your business. If the enemy can distract you, he can take your money. If the enemy can distract you, But if you can stay focused today, you can get your miracle. If you can stay focused today, you can experience God in a way that you've never experienced him before. I, I, this is what I, I sense in my spirit that God is doing right now. I sense that there's more than two dozen people in this room right now that says, Pastor, I've been distracted. I, I've allowed the enemy to distract me. But today, <laughs> I focus on what God says. I will hear only what the word of the Lord says for me. I want only what God has in store. I want God's best. If that's you right now, get out of your seat and run down here to this altar. Don't you wait another minute. That's, I've been distracted. I've been distracted. I've been distracted. I've allowed the enemy to distract me. I've allowed the enemy to distract me. Come on. I've allowed the enemy to distract me. I've allowed the enemy to distract me. Come on. Come on. You know who you are. Come on.
Real softly for me. I want you to listen to something. The Bible says that the woman of, with the issue of blood had spent all of her money. Been to every doctor. She spent everything she had trying to get what she needed. Can I tell you today that there's no amount of money that will get to you what you need? Can I tell you there's no individual that's going to meet your need? Can I tell you, young man, something? You're not going to have your need met, and the need's not going to be met if you get that girl you've been pursuing, but the girl that you've been pursuing doesn't love God like you love God. The same thing goes for the girls. And it's not just young girls, it's older girls. There's no new job. There's no promotion. What each of us in this room long for at this moment only comes from the presence and power of God. That's why you stand here today still searching. The enemy gets us distracted, y'all. If he can keep us from the presence of God, he can keep us from our blessings. That's why we can't let, we can't let it happen. We cannot be distracted. We cannot allow our attention to be taken off of what God is trying to do in our lives. I'm going to ask you to lift your hands all over this room. Lift your hands. And I want them to sing that song. I want them to sing it. Now, this is, this is, this is what I want you to understand. Oftentimes, when we have moves of God like this, what a lot of people wait on is, I want pastor to come by and put his hand on me. But that's not what I hear the Holy Spirit say. The Holy Spirit, I hear the Holy Spirit say that the woman with the issue of blood, that Jesus said to her daughter, it was your faith that made you whole. I believe right now that God is increasing your faith. He's increasing your faith. Man, I just got to obey the Holy Spirit. There's a look on your face today that I've recognized and seen more than one time. You came to this church, even in the beginning, with a hungry heart. And the Lord says today your heart is more hungry at this very moment than it's ever been. The word of the Lord's coming to you and the enemy can't take it from you. What God started in you He's going to finish it. What you've seen will not compare to what you're about to see. The season that's, that's opened up for you in your life right now, God said, I'm going to show you great and mighty things, and there's no devil in hell that's going to stop the blessings and favor of God in your life. In the name of Jesus, come on, sing the song. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you that now, God, you're releasing a new faith in his life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for it right now. Thank you. That's it. Ooh, I sense it. So good to me. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.